Okay. Wonderful. We are live. We're ready to go here. Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. We're very happy to have you here today. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I am a advisor with the Student Financial Support Office in the Office of the Registrar at the University of Alberta. And I'm here today with my good friend and colleague, David, who is also an advisor in student financial support. And we are very excited to chat with you today about uh, scholarships, applying for entrance scholarships at the University of Alberta. Um, we have a pretty jam-packed session, but we will also have time for questions at the end of the session. Um, I believe the chat is disabled, so I don't know if you can pop your questions in the chat right now, but we will have some time at the end to get to all of those different questions. Did I get that right, David? I think uh, people can ask questions in the Q&A. Oh, and okay. then once we answer it, it will pop up for everybody. OK, perfect. So you can use the Q&A instead of the chat for your questions throughout the session. We do have some other lovely advisors here with us today. We have Jeremy and Megan from the international office, as well as Alan and Melissa, who are student financial support coordinators as well, so we can hopefully get to all of your questions and, and help you out with whatever you're looking for today. So we'll chat a little bit today about um, some of the academic costs that you might be looking at for attending the University of Alberta. We will go through a, our scholarship overview. There are basically two main types of scholarships we'll touch on, the admission-based scholarship and the application-based scholarship, so we'll differentiate between those. We'll talk about um, the application itself. So we'll go in a big deep dive into what the application looks like, the questions that we're asking. We will provide some tips and tricks to make your application really shine, as well as our assessment timeline. So when you can expect to start hearing from us and some additional scholarship resources. I'll pass it over to David. Thanks. All right, so the photos that are on your screen right now, this is one of my absolute favorite places on campus. This is called Student Connect. So this is a service offered through the Office of the Registrar for all students on campus. And there are so many things on campus that sometimes you just need some one place to help direct you to all of those. And this is what Student Connect is. So it's gonna connect you to the rest of campus. Some of the most popular services that they do include transcript requests, form requests, fee inquiries. It's where financial support information can be found. If you have questions for a course registration or if you wanna to speak to an advisor, this is all stuff that Student Connect can help you with. Um, they can connect you to us. They can connect you to a bunch of other fabulous resources. You might have a faculty advisor who can answer some really specific questions and they can help connect you with them. They are so wonderfully helpful. They are some of our most wonderful colleagues. So I completely recommend taking advantage of Student Connect being on campus. So next, um, we are here to help. Um, we are gonna spend most of this uh, information session talking about scholarships, but we also encourage you to take the time to think about how you're going to fund your education, whether that is through scholarships or through other avenues. It's really important to research your costs, and we have a cost calculator that we will talk about in a little bit. Um, but you can research, you can start now by researching your tuition, how much that's going to cost, how much are your books and supplies going to cost? Are you going to live in residence? Are you going to live off of campus? Are you going to rent? Are you going to live with family if that's an option? To start thinking about all of these things, like even if you want a researcher, to study abroad or do some volunteering. Uh, there's so many things you can do at university. So the best thing you can do is try to think, how are you gonna financially prepare for all of it so that you can do all of those things that you wanna do. It's also a really good idea to start identifying your financial resources. So do you have like savings from a long time ago? Are your family, parents, guardians gonna help you with this? Um, so just try to start identifying some of those things now. It's always better to be proactive, better than reactive to financial problems. Um, and especially if you know your budget, if you know how much things are going to cost and you know your resources from the onset, then it will be all good to go. Another just little tip before we move on is that it's really important to know deadlines and due dates, especially for financial payments. So 
Um, if you're ever confused about that, you can always reach out to Student Connect. Uh, and plus all of our payments and deadlines and things like that are posted all over our website. Um, but Student Connect can definitely help with so much of that as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Like we'll try to we'll try to let you know as much as we can. But if you're feeling nervous about it, Student Connect is a great place to reach out to. And David had mentioned the cost calculator, which is a feature on our website. Um, if you just head to uab.ca slash cost calc, they just had to cut it off there. It was just too long of a link otherwise. Um, you can pop in your program information and it will spit out uh, some numbers for what you can expect to pay for tuition, fees, housing, books and supplies, and that sort of thing. Our international students um, have moved now to an international guaranteed tuition model at this time. So when you receive your offer of admission to the U of A, it will include in it the amount of tuition that you can expect to pay for your undergraduate degree, which can be spread over four or five years. The payment will have to be made in those four years. So it'll tell you exactly how much you have to pay every year for tuition and fees. Uh, and then your books will be on top of that, living expenses, of course, on top of that as well. So we do like to just touch on this. We think it's really important to um, have a holistic idea of, of what we're working with when we're talking about your fees and how much scholarships can assist. So you just know what you're getting into with all of this rigmarole. But we'll shift gears now a little bit more to focusing on our scholarships and what we have to offer here at the U of A for you. Awesome. So one fun fact we like to share when we're getting into this presentation is that one in five first year students receive a scholarship, which is a pretty good ratio to us. So in this section, we are going to be talking about two types of scholarship opportunities. The first is admission based and the second is application based. So we'll get into the meat and potatoes of what all of that is, but whether you are really into your scholastics, if you are a community leader, if you are a passion advocate, the University of Alberta is going to have a scholarship for you. So first we're gonna get chatting about our admission-based scholarships. So one of my favorite parts about this is that, whoop, am I still here? Hello. Hello. Sorry about that. Sorry. Did we both lose connection there? I think we might have. Sorry okay. about that, everyone. That's a pain in the butt. We will get back to it. We'll reshare all this. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Take it away, David. <laughs> all <Thank> right. <laughs> So the first type of scholarship opportunity that we're going to talk about is our admission-based scholarships. So these are fantastic. Uh, the reason that I think that they're so great is that you get considered for these types of scholarships as soon as you apply to the University of Alberta and are admitted to a program. So these types of scholarships use your admission average at the time of your admission offer. So if you applied on the first day that you could and on October 1st, then we're gonna use the date of October 1st or the admission average that you had on that date to calculate your eligibility for these scholarships. And you'll get sent an email right away or at least within about a week of your admission offer if you are eligible for an admission-based scholarship. These are solely based off of your admission average. There are no essays or anything like that that you need to submit for this, but you do need to accept these offers if you do get an admission-based scholarship, but your email will go over all of that. In order to accept any of the scholarships that you are offered, you do have to accept your, or your offer of admission as well. We do wanna know that you're actually gonna plan on coming here to the U of A. Um, so, with these types of admission-based scholarships, these can encapsulate so many things. So we have gold standard scholarships, we have international student scholarships, uh, we have international country scholarships. So there's lots that are considered under this category of awards. Yeah, absolutely. And if you do receive one of these scholarships, um, you do have time to accept your 
um, admission offer. So you don't have to accept these the next week necessarily, but by September, we are looking for students who have paid their tuition deposit um, and officially accepted their admission offer to the U of A to disperse those funds. So those will stay on your account for quite some time, um, but you will we will be looking to award those to students who and eventually accept that admission offer. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. Okay, so moving into, uh, I'm sure why a lot of you folks are here today. This is about the application-based scholarship competition. So the application for scholarships is currently open and it will be closing on December 15th. We'll go over a bunch of deadlines in the next slide. So to give a bit of an overview about what we're looking for in this competition, as you'll see if you um, have accessed it, is we're really asking a variety of questions, um, some short answers, some long answers, some kind of yes, no questions, to try to get at the types of students who we're looking for for specific awards. But this is quite broad. Some of our awards are looking for scholastic achievement, um, high grades, others are looking for leadership or community-minded students. Sometimes we're looking at scholarships for a specific faculty or program. So there's lots of different reasons that you might be selected for an award from this competition. So when you're thinking about what you wanna write in this application, um, think very broadly about the different things that you've done or participated in, um, the maybe academics that you're very proud of that you wanna share with us that we might not know just from your admission average. So what's really important um, to, to this competition is that you have access to our system called Bear Tracks, which is our student portal for, for our students. This is where the scholarship application lives, is in Bear Tracks. To access Bear Tracks, you must have applied for admission to the U of A. If you have not done that yet, and you would like to apply for scholarships, I would suggest that you apply for admission today. Um, this is just to make sure that you get that access can take a few days to come through. So just to make sure that you get access to the, the scholarship system to bear tracks in the next couple of days and give yourself a couple of days to write your application. I would very, very strongly suggest that you apply for admission today to make sure that you have time to submit your application before the deadline of December the 15th. We cannot provide any extensions on that deadline. We do start assessing scholarship applications the very next day. So it is absolutely crucial that you submit before December 15th or by December 15th um, to make sure that you are considered for the full range of scholarship opportunities that we have at the U of A. So the cost to submit uh, your application for admission is $125. Um, that goes towards the, the cost of actually doing those assessments and the people who review uh, all of the different um, grades that are submitted and all those types of things. So you are required to pay $125 to apply for admission to the U of A. And then usually within a couple of days, you'll receive your access to the Bear Track system where you can jump in and look at the scholarship application. So we only have this one application. It's just called the Application-Based Scholarship Competition. We didn't get too creative with the name. Um, it's just our one single application for all of the scholarships that we administer through our office and with the help of our international office. So these scholarships can range in value from $5,000 um, up to $50,000, which is paid over a four-year term. Um, they can stack, so you can get multiple offers potentially. You could receive um, an admission-based scholarship, the ones we were talking about earlier, like a gold standard or an international student scholarship, as well as a maybe a scholastic scholarship through this competition or a leadership scholarship through this competition. Um, so you can get multiple awards that can stack up on top of each other. Um, I think that's all we need to say about this one. Is there anything else I'm missing? Yes. I will stress it one more time though, because the deadline is really coming up quickly here. Today is December 9th. You will want to apply for your application to the so admission to the University of Alberta today to really make sure that you have the time to get access to scholarship applications before December 15th, okay? So some of the components of the application that you'll see when you are in the application, uh, when you're going through thinking about what you wanna write, um, we will have a section we call the activity summary, where we'll ask you to tell us about your top three activities. We'll do a deep dive into that in the next slide. 
We will have some long answer questions that we'll ask you to answer. We'll have three of those. We'll have an additional information section where we'll be asking some pretty simple yes, no questions. And then we'll also have a section where we'll ask for your references contact information. Um, not asked for in the application, but something that we will consider is also your admission information. So we will work with our team in admissions to make sure that we have um, your admission average and all that good information to consider within that assessment as well. So for the activity summary, again, we'll be asking for your top three um, activities, and this can include a variety of things. Um, it can be some more academic side things, maybe some um, competitions or research. It can be mentorship, community involvement, volunteerism, public service, athletics, uh, involvement in societies or in clubs in your school, all kinds of different things that can be considered as an activity. Um, basically what we're looking for is that students demonstrate engagement, accomplishment, uh, and or leadership. So choose activities that really highlight who you are and what you're all about. Each activity summary will allow you 100 words to tell us about what you've been up to, what your role was, um, how it impacted you, what you enjoyed about that position, any of that good stuff. Um, you can tell us a little bit about the organization that you were that you're referencing in that. So whether it's uh, maybe an athletics team or something like that. Be careful not to use acronyms here, so not abbreviations for anything. Give us the whole name so that we can really understand what that organization was up to. And you'll also have an opportunity in this section to go in depth onto one of those activities. Um, we're gonna ask you to really expand on one of these activities um, in 250 words and tell us a lot more about the impact that you've had on your community uh, and the impact that perhaps it had on you and what that experience really meant to you. So that'll be the final section of the activity summary. All right, now getting into the long answer questions. So we are gonna talk about each one of the questions in more detail, but just overall, um, we at the University of Alberta, the goal of these questions is to get to know you better what makes you exceptional and what will help provide us with an idea of how you will contribute to the University of Alberta community. So when you're answering these questions, please take the time to reflect on what you've learned, what you've experienced and how this aligns with your goals. This isn't just a space to list all of your accomplishments that we do want to hear about those accomplishments. So please don't just list them off. We want to know um, a, the answers to the questions, um, but B, we also want to know a lot more about the experience you had when you were getting those accomplishments. Um, so we will evaluate you on a broad range of criteria, including academic achievement and personal experience when we're assessing you for these scholarships, and that's where these long answers really come in. Um, so now we'll discuss the questions and focus on some essay writing tips. So the first question that we have on the application-based scholarship is discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. What did you learn from this experience? How has this experience shaped your future goals? So one of the things with this question um, is please make sure that you answer all parts of it. I know that it's a three-part question, um, but we do have specific things we wanna hear about from you. We wanna know what you learned about it. We wanna know how this shaped your future goals. So please make sure that you're addressing that when you're answering these questions. We wanna know what you've learned and how it's impacted where you're going now. So that's a really exciting part of that question. The next question is describe a topic, idea, or concept that you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? So this question is to do with your passions. So we wanna know how do you engage with your community about your passions and why are you passionate about it? Does it maybe tie into why you're choosing a specific program at the University of Alberta? Um, does it tie into a volunteer experience that you wanna do or maybe some research that you wanna do? So please tell us all about what interests you. For the third question. This is what we call our choose your own adventure question. So this is something where we want you to pick what question excites you the most. So 
the University of Alberta would like to get to know you better and are looking for information that did not come through elsewhere on the application. Pick one of the following and let us know all about you. This is your time to shine and make sure you show what matters to you and why. So the questions that you have to pick from are people who have influenced you, your bucket list items, greatest things you have learned, things you hope to achieve, your dreams and aspirations, who or what inspires you, or your greatest accomplishments. So this is a fantastic way to make sure that if one of our questions didn't really get at something that you wanted to let us know about, this is a great way to pick a question that is going to talk about that. Or if you have something that you mentioned previously, but you didn't really go quite as in depth as you would have hoped, this is a really great way to make sure that we get to hear about it. So lastly, we do have some additional information that we'll be collecting at the end of the scholarship uh, application. So some scholarships just have really specific criteria and we wanna make sure that we are matching them to students who are eligible for them. So we are going to have some quick yes, no, or yes or no questions at the end of this. But if you check yes to some of them, that's great. If you check no to all of them, that's also fine. You're still gonna be considered for the vast majority of our scholarships. There are just a few that we have that have some really specific criteria that we need to make sure that we hit. Um, and then we also will need you to submit a reference. So you'll have to choose one person to potentially provide a reference on your behalf. Please make sure that you choose somebody who can speak from their own experience about one or more of the activities that you included on the scholarship application. The references will not be required to submit a reference at the time of application, but will be contacted by us at a later date if a reference is required. One thing to know with this as well is just, we know that your parents and guardians have lots of lovely things to say about you, but maybe make sure that it's a community member or a teacher or somebody who can be a little bit more impartial and can speak to your experiences that you spoke about um, in the application. Yeah, great call. And again, I'll just stress that references are not required to submit a reference at this time, we will contact them in the future if we do require a reference for any of the scholarships you're being considered for. If a reference hasn't heard from us, it doesn't mean that you're not being considered for a scholarship. Um, it's just our process to only check on references as needed. Okay, so we wanted to provide some of the kind of tips and tricks that we've found over the years of reviewing all of these applications. Uh, we review tens of thousands probably in our office. Um, many, many applications are reviewed. So we've really kind of gotten to think about what, what we think makes for a really strong application. So a few main things to make sure that you're touching on is um, presenting who you are and writing about the experiences that have shaped you. We also love to see students who are able to showcase their commitment to and growth within the things you take on. So whether that's from an activity that you mentioned in your activity summary, really diving into um, that commitment to an organization, talking about how you've grown, maybe you started out um, on student council as a treasurer or secretary, and now you're president or vice president, something like that, just showing that kind of growth. And then of course, discussing how scholarships will make a difference in your life or allow you to impact your community. So what these things really together bolster is an application that shows, um, shows us your vision, your, your whole vision for um, who you will be and what you will do in the future and what you will uniquely bring to the University of Alberta campus community. Um, within those applications, it's always a good idea to include little, little reasons, um, demonstrate uh, reasons why the committee who's reviewing this should believe in you and your future. Um, you can demonstrate that by talking about specific moments of learning, of growth, or of taking action. Those are all really great ways to kind of make sure that people are seeing that potential in you. And then it doesn't ever hurt to provide evidence of research in the specific institution that you are applying for. I know folks are sometimes applying for several different universities, so I understand that that can be kind of tricky, but one thing that can set you apart um, is talking about something maybe specific to the U of A that you would like to become involved in or a specific reason that you think you would be a good fit for the U of A or for the campus community. 
Um, for example, the University of Alberta is um, a big research institution. So if by chance you have interest in research, you've had some previous experience that you've mentioned in your essays or in your activity summary with research, um, that might be a, a way to say, this is why I really see a good fit um, with, with me and this campus and this institution. Uh, and that doesn't ever hurt to kind of really show that you've reflected upon that a little bit as well. And then we get into something a little more abstract. Um, and this is a section that we like to call defining moments. It can be difficult sometimes to think about how to make your essays stand out um, and really shine and be set apart. We do read thousands and thousands of these. So uh, it is really important to try to find ways to make yourself stand apart. So what we've kind of found does that for a lot of our students is thinking about your experiences as a collection of defining moments. And what I mean by that is defining moments are the moments when you changed, when you grew, when you made a difference in your community, or those aha moments, if you know what I mean, when you went, oh, I've never thought about it that way. And maybe it changes how you think about that forever, right? Um, so those are really unique. And, and they will be incredibly unique to the individual. So even if you and your friend, you know, have gone through school together, have similar grades, you study together, you do the same volunteer work together, the thing that impacted you will be different than the thing that most impacted your friend or that one moment for you will be very different from what was, what maybe your friend experienced. So those are ways to really kind of set that apart. Because what it means is that these experiences may be common. Um, they may happen to lots of different people. There might have been several volunteers at that organization, or perhaps we all went through a global pandemic recently as well, right? So some big societal common experiences. But what we want to see to set things apart is to really try to focus instead on those moments of change, those moments um, where something just kind of shifted in you. And that I think will really make your application shine a little bit more. So moments are kind of these things, they, are, they happen once, they're really impactful, they're often action-based and they are specific to you. So just something to keep in mind while you're thinking about what you might wanna write for those essay questions we just talked about, what you might wanna include in your activity summary is thinking about any of those times um, in the recent memory where you've gone Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, we'd love to hear about those moments. We think those are so cool. And they're usually around something that you're really passionate about, that you really care about, and that's really authentic to you. I hope that makes sense and isn't too abstract. <laughs> and I hope that helps um, a little bit with just thinking about how to maybe set up your essay structure a little bit and things like that. There are some additional tips that I think are helpful for all applications that you might submit to any institution, wherever you're hoping to go. Um, the first one is to always be you. Um, within that, you can be creative, you can be unique. Again, show us your passion, tell us about the things that have impacted you and put things in your own words. Um, we love to see that. Again, going back to those defining moments, thinking a little bit about what sets you apart from the other students who are applying for scholarships. Um, be clear, concise, and thoughtful. One thing I really recommend is to write your essays, um, or write your application in a separate Word document. Our system doesn't have a very good spell checker or grammar checker, um, which is Mm, but uh, it'll writing it in a separate Word document will make sure that you get the best um, spell check and grammar check going on. Having it maybe reread by a teacher or a friend or a family member can also be really helpful. And then you can just copy and paste your answers over to the application when you're ready to submit at that time. Uh, making sure that you copy everything and put it over really correctly and you're really careful um, with how you do that. But I would really recommend um, trying that instead of entering everything right into the system. Um, thinking about avoiding too much repetition, um, using again those acronyms or shorthand or abbreviations, any slang terms um, that we might not know what you're referencing. We do have different folks from campus um, read these applications. So sometimes slang doesn't land <laughs> or like shorthand doesn't land the same with, with some of our professors who might be reviewing. 
as it does with like super cool people like David and I, who are really hip with the times and not old at all. <laughs> <laughs> And then just always making sure that you are reading carefully and following the instructions. So with this, those deadlines again will stress so, so important. Applying for admission today, if you have not already, to make sure that you can submit your application by December 15th. You are welcome to apply early to the competition. You don't have to wait to the 15th. Um, if you're ready to go and done, you can hit submit. It doesn't give you any extra points, but you are welcome to apply early. At the very least, you have to apply on time. We do not accept late applications. Just making sure again that all those sections are complete. If you've copy and pasted everything over, you've grabbed all of the essay, you're not missing in the last you know, sentence or anything like that. And that when you're ready to hit submit and you're all done, you double, triple check that you hit the submit button. I know that sounds silly, but every year there's a couple of students who just miss hitting submit. They, they think they did and, and it's done and then it doesn't go through. So once you hit submit, you will receive an email that says we've received your application. Your status in the application will change from in progress to submitted. So all those things are good things to just double, triple check to make sure that you have all of the things that you need popped in there. Lindsay, before we move on, do you mind just mentioning how students can find the application? I realize we didn't touch on that quite yet. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's a few different ways that you can get to it. Um, if you have your access to our bear track system, you can just Google bear tracks, you Alberta, and it'll take you right to that web page where you can log in with what we call your CCID, CCID. Um, and your password that was provided to you at the time that you submitted your application or a couple days after you submitted your application in some cases. Um, you can go to uab.ca slash awards and we do have an apply now button that will take you to bear tracks and then in bear tracks, uh, I think it's on the left hand navigation. There is a section that says like scholarships and financial supports and you click that and then it'll go to scholarships. Sorry, I'm very visual. <laughs> then it'll pop out and then you can click scholarships and then apply now and it will take you to the application portal. Again, if you don't have access to bear tracks, there's no way to access the scholarship application. It lives inside bear tracks. Does that help David? That's wonderful. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> <laughs> so now we can chat a little bit more about timelines. So the assessments will start in December. That's why we have that December 15th our deadline is because we start assessing them as soon as we can and we try to make sure that we're doing everything that we can so that students can hear back from us as quick as we can get out to them. So because we're reviewing thousands of applications, it's not an, something that's going to happen in the next week. Typically, we start seeing offers to students going out in February and then until about June. But regardless, all applicants will hear back on a final decision from us um by july of next year um so we do offer scholarships and rounds which means that you, you if you are given an application-based scholarship you will have 30 days to accept that scholarship if you don't want to accept it quite yet for whatever reason um then after that 30 days then it will be re-offered to another student so all of our scholarships will come uh, all the communication that you get with them will have clearly indicated deadlines. So that's what we were mentioning earlier, just make sure that you're aware of all of those deadlines. And in order to accept any of these scholarships, you are going to have to accept your offer to the University of Alberta as well, which involves paying a tuition deposit. Um, so just things to be aware of um, when you start getting those emails. Um, as well, we're going to use this application for scholarship opportunities throughout the award cycle. So you will hopefully hear back from us for lots of type, different types of scholarships um, from this one single application, which is why we love this application so much. Um, as for other funding opportunities that we have available on campus, we have some uh, that we recommend online. There is a scholarship website called Wyconic Scholarships. There is another website called Scholarships Canada. Um, so there are lots. These are basically websites that host a lot of information on the types of scholarships available either to anybody or to people who are specifically looking to attend the University of Alberta. Um, so those are some fantastic resources. When you're searching online, make sure that you actually do some 
research on the type of um, application, if there is an application through a third party website, um, make sure that they have up to date information and make sure that they are legitimate. Unfortunately, there can be some scams online. So don't give out all of your personal information um, or don't give out any if you're not confident that it's a legitimate source um, for scholarships and awards. Otherwise, if you're looking for other types of funding opportunities, check out your community. Sometimes there are sport, our community, faith-based or workplace organizations that have scholarships and awards available for students. So always exploring those options. Um, maybe your government has some type of scholarship opportunity uh, or student financing available. Um, so check those out as well. So there's lots of fun stuff as well. When you are on campus, we host uh, Money Talks e-news letter that goes out every few months um, where we like to talk about financial literacy. If you think Lindsay and I are super cool, then you want to learn even more from us and the cool peeps in our office, then you can uh, get that newsletter sent to you every now and then and it'll include a bunch of things that we think are really important for students to know about money and uh, financial literacy on campus and a bunch of opportunities. Absolutely. So that kind of brings us to the end of the formal presentation. Um, we are happy to go through some of the questions in the Q&A here now and see what's been going on. For our online tips, um, you can always go to uab.ca slash awards for a lot of this information. Um, you can email us at awards at ualberta.ca or you can go through Student Connect. They do have a really amazing web form. Um, if your questions involve admission, admission averages, registration, how to pay, um, your tuition deposit, how to apply, anything like that, um, please go through the Student Connect website, um, which is uab.ca slash ask, and that will take you to their web form. Um, they do have, so you can submit your question via web form, they do have live chat, so they do have advisors who are just exactly like David and I who are waiting to, to chat with you. And they do have some telephone available as well if you are very urgently needing um, some support. They can also support you with a telephone call. And all that is available on their website, which is uab.ca slash ask. So if we want to talk really quickly, I'll just go over the timelines again if you want. Uh, we just got a few questions about that. So the timelines for submitting your application for the scholarship, uh, for the, for the application-based scholarships is December 15th in Mountain Time. So that is the time zone that Alberta is in, which is where we are. So please make sure that you've submitted your application by then. Um, otherwise, you can expect to hear back from us starting in February all the way through June, and you will get a response from us in July, no matter what the outcome is. Um, I see that we also have some questions about activity summaries. Do you want to go over that again, maybe? Yeah, so those activity summaries um, are where we're going to be looking for kind of a more brief overview. There are only 100 words, and you get three spaces for the activity summaries. Um, this can be academic achievements. Uh, if you would like to highlight anything specific that you have done academically, so not necessarily just saying I went to this class and I got an A, but like maybe you've competed um, in a science fair or done research or um, a math, um, like math leads type thing or something like that. Those are all great things to, to reference there. Um, you can also be talking about more kind of community-based involvement. That might be volunteering. Um, that might be working with animals senior citizens, not to lump those together, but you know what I mean. You got a few different options there. Uh, and so we're kind of just in a hundred words looking for you to tell us what you did um, and why it was important to you. And then we'll ask you to do a bit of a deeper dive into one of those activities and provide us with a kind of longer answer format question about that activity, um, the impact that you had and the impact that it had on you as well. Did that awesome. help? Okay. Thank you. So are there 
to say I might be relying on some of our advisors in the chat, but are there some common questions that we can address? I'm just going through them here. Well, and I should clarify. So I we've stressed very much that you need to apply for admission in order to be able to access the scholarship application and to apply for scholarships. You do not have to be admitted. So if you apply for admission today and you don't get admitted, that's no problem. We will still be looking at students and reviewing students who just applied to the scholarship competition. If you don't have your admission yet, that's just fine. We'll be working with our team at admissions to make sure that we have the information we need when we need it a little bit down the road, okay? So um, if you applied a while ago and you still haven't gotten um, your admission offer yet, that's no problem. There's no kind of hard timeline on that. We'll do our review, we'll assess students um, kind of without the admission information initially. And then we wrap that in when we're starting to make decisions about selection and who we think is a good fit for which scholarship. So um, usually we're looking for hopefully in February to be seen, January, February to be seen, um, students who are admitted and having those admission averages that we can look at. Um, that's one of the days we often see students uploading a lot of, usually in January, we see a lot of students uploading new documents and new grades and that kind of stuff. So we'll be keeping an eye out for that information. Also, I'm going to send out a short link right now. So we mentioned it earlier, but if you go to uab.ca slash ask, which I just uh, sent out in the chat there, that is how you can access that Student Connect form that Lindsay was talking about a little bit earlier. And if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I was asking or I was telling you all about how wonderful Student Connect is. Um, if you're having issues with your application or your campus computing ID, which is your login information for things like Bear Tracks, which will be for our um, so if you need to uh, upload documents or if you have questions about accessing resources or submitting uh, documents for admission requirements or things like that, they are going to be the best place for you to uh, reach out to initially. There is a wonderful team there and they will help you out as much as they can. Um, so basically what you might need for, um, if you are looking to get access to Bear Tracks, that is kind of like the student portal for all students at the University of Alberta. So it can do lots of things. It can be where you uh, register for your classes. It can be where you get some of your official student documentation. Um, it's really where a lot of things will live um, in as your student status at the University of Alberta. But the main thing that we're talking about it today for is that it will give you access to that scholarship application that we spent lots of time talking about. So if you're having issues logging into Bear Tracks, if you're having issues with any of your login information or about documents or anything like that, please make sure that you go to that uab.ca slash ask and the Student Connect people are lovely and so, so good. Well, I'll be happy to answer all your questions. I believe they also have live chat available for certain times of the day. We sure do, yeah. I'm just checking out. We still have some more questions rolling in um, specific about the deadlines. So we do want to make sure that we stress that the deadline to submit your application for or for application-based scholarships is December 15th. Again, Please make sure that that's a big priority, especially at this point in the year, and that you can start hearing offer, hearing back about offers um, as soon as, sometimes I guess as soon as January, but they can happen all the way up until the summer. And then we will send an email at the very end to let you know whether or not you received one. So just scrolling through more questions here to see if there's some common themes. Just gonna mention again um, for Bear Tracks, 
if you aren't, if you go to the website for Veritrax and it asks you for your information, your CCID and your password that the University of Alberta gives you when you apply for admission. Um, if you don't have that CCID and that password, then you need to get that either by applying for admission or if your password link isn't working, there is a way to get a password reset. Just go to the Student Connect website. I think Dave, put it, you put it in the chat there, the uab.ca slash ask, and you can search for password reset and it will take walk you through the steps to reset your password. Um, if you can't get into Bear Tracks, it's likely because you either have not applied for admission or you maybe need a password reset. We have some more questions about the reference that we mentioned earlier as well. So all you will need to do is provide the reference contact information. So you don't need to write an essay for why that person is your reference or nothing like that. We just need the contact information for them. And then we will reach out to them if the scholarship that you're being considered for requires a reference. So we don't reach out to everyone's reference immediately. We wait to see if you're eligible for a scholarship um, that requires a reference and then we will reach out to them. It's also really good etiquette to let that person know that you will be um, listing them as a reference. So if they do, uh, just to expect to be contacted by the University of Alberta. Just so that if we email them, they know what it's about. Having some questions as well that are talking about admission averages. So we, if we are looking at you for an award or scholarship that uses your admission average or that mentions grades whatsoever, we use your admission average at the point of admission. So what that means is that if you are admitted on October 1st, we will use your grades as of October 1st because that was your point of admission. You'll still need to maybe submit some final transcripts, maybe some final documents or some grade updates at the very end of the year um, to retain your offer of admission, read through your uh, offer letter to just see what is required of you. But for any scholarships and awards where grades are a component, we will use your grades at that point of admission. Lots of questions rolling in here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to do some typing and do some talking at the same time. And I, I see there's a few questions about the duration of scholarships. So some scholarships are what we would call renewable, which means that if you meet the criteria to renew, which is usually maintaining a certain GPA, you are able to get the next year's funding and then the next year's funding and so on. It's very clearly outlined in the notice of award what those requirements will be. Some are just one-time payments. So if your scholarship offer, um, your notice of award letter doesn't talk about renewal requirements or doesn't say this is paid over four years, then it's just for one time. You get that payment um, your first year and then there isn't subsequent payments. Um, if you are attending this presentation and you are looking at graduate funding. So uh, the majority of our presentation talked about undergraduate entrance scholarships and awards. So meaning that you're coming to us likely from high school, maybe you took a few years off or maybe you're looking to come for an undergraduate degree um, at the University of Alberta. Um, so that's what the majority of our presentation talked about. If you're here and you are looking at graduate studies, so a master's program or a professional program um, that is a graduate level, um, we do have a what's called a faculty of graduate studies and research who runs a lot of their own funding opportunities. So if you are looking uh, for graduate funding specifically, um, I would recommend reaching out to the faculty of graduate studies and research. Um, they will run a lot of things for students that are looking for that level of academia.
as well. If you have questions about a specific program that you're looking at applying to, I saw that a lot of questions and when I was scrolling through have questions about either how programs are set up or about certain details about um, one program versus another. Um, so if you do have those types of questions, I do recommend, again, going to Student Connect. I know that we keep mentioning them, but they are so, so fantastic. So they can answer so many questions about the differences between programs, how certain programs are set up. And if your question is super specific and they might not have the most up-to-date information, they'll connect you with a faculty advisor who can tell you all about what you're looking to learn more about. So you can always start with that Student Connect, which you can access at that uab.ca slash ask uh, link that I sent out a little bit ago. So if you have program questions, if you have issues with logging in to anything, if you have really anything that you need from the U of A, they are such a fantastic first starting point. Because if they can't answer it for some reason, they're gonna know all the people who can. So many questions. So where can you find your CCID if you have applied to the University of Alberta? You would have written or you would have submitted an email address. And I believe that your CCID is sent to that email address after you have applied. So maybe check your spam folder if you haven't seen it. Um, it also doesn't happen immediately. Sometimes it takes a few days um, for your CCID to be assigned to you. So if you applied, if you're so motivated by our presentation that you decided to apply right now and you somehow got through the entire application in a very short period of time, um, you might not have received it quite yet. So if you don't get it right away, don't worry. I should also note that we are recording this presentation and the recording will be shared. I'm not too sure will it be shared. Can one of my panelists maybe help me out and see if it will be shared over email or on a website? It will be sent out over email, I'm being told. Um, also, if you have any questions, um, you can also email welcome at ualberta.ca. So we have that student connect link, but you can also email welcome at ualberta.ca and there are some fantastic advisors there who will be able to help with you with all of your program questions, admission questions, all that fun stuff. There's so many resources on campus, it's really fantastic. Even if sometimes if you email the wrong resource, they will connect you to the right one. Uh, I'm being told welcome at ualberta.ca is for international student admission questions. So I will send out that email in the chat as well, just so that everybody has a record of it. Oh, Jeremy already did. We're good. I am also being, there's some questions I can see here that are regarding uh, applying for scholarships every year. So yes, the scholarships that we mentioned in this presentation, these are entrance-based scholarships. So for students who are coming into the University of Alberta um, from high school or from very, very little um, credit. Um, so with that, um, once you are a student on campus, there are even more um, scholarships and awards. Um, so we will have lots of stuff for you to continue applying for once you are a student on campus. Um, so this isn't just a, a one-time application. We know that every year you're going to have different experiences and we're going to want to hear about that and hear what you're doing. If you're loving U of A or not, so we have new applications each year to be continuously assessed for scholarships and awards. Oh, here's a good one about the admission based scholarships. So um, if you receive an admission based scholarship offer to your second choice program, um, it may be able to go over to your first choice program with you when you get admitted to that first choice. 
but they do have different thresholds sometimes. So not all of it might transfer. Um, but if it's like an international student scholarship or a country scholarship, those are not faculty specific. You can take them anywhere. If it is a gold standard scholarship to say the Faculty of Arts um, and you're waiting to get into science, you may not be eligible for the Faculty of Science gold standard. We do set a top 5% kind of threshold for those and that does vary by faculty. Um. If you have, and I noticed some questions are, um, some students are wondering about deadlines specific to awards or scholarships that they may have already received. So if you're curious about any of the details there, I would definitely recommend to check the email that was sent to you as a notice when you receive those um, scholarships and awards. If you have any questions that aren't answered in that email, you can connect with Student Connect and they will put you through to us or you can email awards at ualberta.ca and I believe that will be linked in the uh, letter that was sent to you when you received an award or scholarship. I think we've gotten to like most of the scholarship related questions. I do see a few uh, kind of more admissions based questions, um, which we're not able to get through all of them at this time. But I believe we've kind of gone through and answered all of these live. I'm not seeing any at a quick glance, although there are very, very many questions. So we're good on everyone for making sure that they're on top of it and joining us today. Um, we do have to depart on time here. David and I have some other sessions to get to this morning. So we are gonna have to maybe leave some of these unanswered. Again, if your question is related to admissions, um, assessment of admissions, your admission average, transcripts, how to submit, an application, how to accept an application, how to pay a deposit. Uh, all of those questions can go through Student Connect, which is uab.ca slash ask. If your question is specifically about awards um, and wasn't answered in this presentation, you can also, you can go through Student Connect and if they can't answer it, they will send it to us. You can connect with us at awards at ualberta.ca. You can connect with our international office at welcome at ualberta.ca and they'll be happy to assist as well um, and we're happy to try to make sure we have all these questions answered uh, we thank you so much for joining us i hope this time was okay for wherever you are in the world uh, we so so look forward to being able to welcome students to our campus in the fall and and get get everyone safely on campus and, and safely being able to enjoy everyone's company again um, I think anything else you want to throw in there, David? Any last remarks? No, everyone, thank you so, so much for attending. I'm not too sure if it is early morning for you, if it is middle of the night for you, but regardless as to where you're attending from, thank you so, so much for spending the last hour with us. We really appreciate you. Okay. Be well, everyone. Bye. Bye.